from Kremlin for examination. Today's lesson will focus on four main points. As you can see on the slide, the first one is common project management process interactions. Here, we will describe the relationship between the processes, how they are linked together. And then we will move to project management process groups, the five project management process groups required for any process. Among these groups, this lecture would like to cover two parts of them, which are initiating process group and planning process group. So please follow us carefully because there will be a very interesting mini game and Q&A section at the end of the presentation. Now, I would like to be the first person to kick off with the first part of the presentation, which is common project management process interaction. Okay, so as you can see on this slide, this is a project management process. So to run any project, you need to understand two methodologies. The first one is project life cycle, and the second one is project management process. Okay, so don't worry, I will make it clear for you in today's lecture. So I'd like to talk about project management process first. There are totally five process groups to learn here. The first phase is the initiation phase where the project is selected and defined. For example, assembling project team and assigning their responsibilities is one of the tasks in this phase. In the planning phase, decisions are made about what should be done, when should various activities be done. Execution and controlling generally occur together. Okay, please focus on this. In the execution phase, the project team tries to do what was planned. In the monitoring and controlling phase, project manager measures project's accomplishments and compare it to expectations. The last phase is the closing phase. In this phase, the project deliverables are accepted and success will be celebrated. So now I would like to talk about the interactions between these. Process interactions can be in several different forms in which the basic project management processes, such as initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, as well as closing, can interact with each other during the course of conducting project activities. For example, processes associated with monitoring and controlling can affect the executing process. Items associated with the initiating process can affect planning. In some cases, items associated with the execution process can have drastic effects on the closing process. There are several interactions between these different project management processes, as well as the influence of knowledge areas within each process. Okay, so the integrative nature of project management requires the monitoring and controlling process group to interact with other process groups as shown in uh, the slide. In addition, since management of a project is a finite effort, the initiating process groups begins the project and the closing process group ends it. Next, please. Project management process groups are linked by the outputs they produce. The process groups are seldom either discrete or one-time events. They are overlapping activities that occur throughout the project. The output of one process generally becomes an input to another process or is a deliverable of the project. The planning process group provides the executing process group with the project management plan and project documents. And as the project progresses, it often entails updates to the project management plan and the project documents. So this chart illustrates how the process groups interact and shows the level of overlap at various times. Please, if the project uh, is divided into phases, the process groups interact within each phase. Okay. Uh, so, 
as I have said oh, before, to, to run any project, you need to understand no, no, no. two you methodologies. Can... The first by yourself. For example, Michael, and the Tuấn Anh means uh, you can say Tuấn Anh, okay? And Remember then I can know you are here, okay? These two. So, project life cycle, as you have learned in the last Với những bạn mà đang ở đây thì các em không cần phải nốt cái tên của các em. Nếu các bạn mà đang cần phải đi học sang lớp khác học thì mới nốt nha, để Linh chỉ đọc cho cô. Còn những bạn mà chúng ta đang ở đây thì chúng ta không phải lead cho cái execution and closure like you when you have to start the project have to start the project and then you organize and prepare it Linh Chi có đây không Linh Chi? Then you carry out the project work yeah, and then you close yeah, the yeah. project yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, let's take an example to understand yeah, these two methodologies okay. okay, so I have a question um, for you this I'm Thảo uh, An so and I'm not I have, absent. Uh, put in the Just wait for next chat, round, okay? The uh, yes. four phases of the project life cycle. So who can tell me, who yes. can tell so me M the project know. life cycle of a software not, development not team? Not your time, yeah, not your can turn, you okay? Me, Just wait. Uh, can you type your answer in the group mm -hmm. chat? Mm -hmm. Yes, Trường Giang, Ngô Văn Hiếu. Yes, Trường Giang, yes. yes. And Linh Chi don't need to, 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 easy. to, to, to uh, you, uh, speak your name, their name, they have to speak their name, okay, if they are here, okay. And closure. Uh -huh. To give out the final product, yeah, the software product, software Just say Van Hiếu is okay. So anyone with uh, the correct answer will get a bonus from our teacher. Yes, so hard. Yeah. Yeah, it, maybe it's a little bit long, so it takes time. Yeah, yeah. We can come back to the next round, yeah. don't worry. Just, uh, we have a great study. Okay. Thank you, ma. Yeah. Can you ask the question again? Okay, so can you uh, can you describe, can you list the, the, the task for the project life cycle of a software development team? Okay, the project life cycle for a software development team. The project life cycle will include four phases, initiation, planning, execution, and closure. Yeah. Follow these steps and you will develop, you may be able to develop the project life cycle of your own team. Okay, so if no one, no one can give me the answer. <laughs> you, you, you can try to figure out uh, step by step. Uh, actually, just uh, some simple um, initiations so they can figure out. Okay. Okay, so. If no one can give me the answer, then I will give you <laughs> my answer. Okay, <laughs> so uh, just just we have the, the answer will vary. Okay, there are various answers based on each team. So my answer will uh, there will be steps like this: requirement analysis, system design, implementation, and then testing, deployment, and maintenance. Okay, so to understand these two methodologies, project life cycle and project management process, we will break out this, uh, this process, okay? So we take the first phase as an example. The first phase is requirement analysis, okay? You can see requirement analysis. We need to start this phase. The, the other word for start is initiate. 
So we want to know, for example, if the right people are present, if the right information is available, do we have necessary approvals and authority to start this project? And I call all of these tasks is initiating. Okay, initiating. Next, right, that's settled. Okay, now let's plan how we're going to conduct the requirement analysis. What tasks need to be done? Who's going to be doing what? How long is each task you're going to take? And therefore, how long will the project be? And so on. In other words, I call it planning. Right? Okay, so now we've got our plan. Let's carry it out. It's executing. We better make sure that we are executing according to our plan. Are we on the right track? It is monitoring and controlling. So we are now completed with the requirement analysis and we have prepared our business requirements document and we have obtained the sign off from the key stakeholders. We can now close this phase. It is called closing. Yeah. So as you, as you can see, the project management process has been applied within a phase of the project life cycle. In a similar way, it is applied to each phase of the project life cycle. It is also applied to the project as a whole. That's why I said at the start that the project management process was all about to manage the, the project, not about the sequence of tasks. Okay, so at this point, I hope you have been able to distinguish between these two terms, project life cycle and project management process. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So uh, in this slide is only some type of project, some examples that uh, type of projects that uh, you can think of. EPC is engineering procurement and construction so these type of project i think i believe that you can search on google to understand about it uh, because we don't have much time okay next slide please so on the slide now there are eight project management knowledge area okay we called these our management knowledge area So these knowledge areas represent the responsibilities of a project manager for tasks carried out throughout the project life cycle. It is interesting to contrast how these knowledge areas correspond to and interact with the five process groups. In some cases, interactions of certain knowledge areas with other knowledge areas can actually produce what are called compound interactions. Project managers can use certain knowledge areas to influence other knowledge areas, creating these compound interactions. As project managers come to understand the use of project management process groups and how knowledge areas can be used to manage various aspects of project activities, this gives the project managers tools and techniques to effectively and efficiently manage projects to completion. OK, so in order to update your own project, you should know how to uh, collaborate and cooperate well between these uh, management knowledge area and your process groups. So the initiating process, so as I have gone through the overall process of the process management um, project management process, now I would like to go more detail into the first uh, process group of today, which is the initiating process group. So this group consists of those processes performed to define a new project or a new phase of an existing project by obtaining authorization to start the project or phase. Within the initiating processes, the, the initial scope is defined 
and the initial financial resources are committed. Internal and external stakeholders. So the initiating process group includes the following project management processes. The first one is to develop project charter. So develop project charter is the process of developing a document that formally authorizes a project or a phase and documenting initial requirements that satisfy the stakeholders' needs and expectations. The second one is identify stakeholders. Identifying stakeholder is the process of identifying all people or organizations impacted by the pro project and documenting relevant information regarding their interest, involvement, and impact on project success. So involving the customers and other stakeholders during initiation generally improves the probability of shared ownership, deliverable acceptance, and customer and other stakeholder satisfaction. So that is the end of my part. Now I would like to invite to Zoom to conjoin the presentation. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And it's my pleasure to present to you the project tractor, which means I give you the chance to do a to do a sample of the project tractor. So stay tuned because at the end of my part, I will show you a small example would help you to understand more about a project charter. So next slide, I want to show you the content here. So there are five main parts in the project charter input. The first one, contract, or you can understand contract as a one type of agreements. Next, I show you the project statement of work or uh, present for a project so which means I will say it later. A third one is business case, uh, organizational process access, and last one is enterprise environmental factors. So first, let's move to the contract. Uh, maybe there is not much slide about the contract, but I just want to show you like contract is a form of thing, you know, to uh, say out the responsibility and the rise of the parties involved in a project. So contract is the most common type of agreements, but I think there are more type of agreements. So uh, anyone, can you tell me more types of agreements beside contract that you also know? I can give you the first example, like we have a memorandum is a one kind of agreement. So anyone, can you tell me, do you know any example of it one? Oh, yes. Uh, okay, Ngakman, can you come and answer? Yes, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I am Pham Nhật Minh and my ID is uh, ILS IQ 18231. Yeah, um, I think besides contracts, many companies can make a flexible use of other type of agreements, such as, like you said, is memorandum or service level agreement. Uh, LOI is a letter of intent, verbal or written agreement, and email maybe. Yeah, and they can choose the time agreement based on their business needs. Yeah, I think like that. Thank you very much. Okay, that's a very perfect answer. Okay, so you know that people may talk a lot about about a contract, but I think depend on the situation, you can choose the type of agreement with uh, suitable for your business needs. Thank you very much. Uh, next one, I will show you uh, a very I think is more important is a project statement of work. So, what is a project statement of work? You know, like you see a loss in procurement manager management in the previous course, but I just want to remind you, like it's a description of the products or service de delivered by the project. So uh, you should uh, keep me in your mind. There are two types of statement, of, uh, project statement of work, internal and external. In the internal, like is it provided by the initiator or sponsor, which means inside the company, like the business needs, uh, product or service requirement, other things requirement you need. And from external project, like you receive it from the customer, uh, more 
more very typical example is the bidding, like you said, invitation to bid or even a small part of a contract and so on. So there are two types of project segment of work. And in the container of it, so what is the container of a statement of work? There are three things. The first one is business need, like what is your current problem? What do your company need it right now? The next one is the description of the product or a service uh, scope it will involve. And last one is a plan. You develop a plan to improve it. So there are three main things in here. So uh, let's move to the next one. I think a uh, very important too is a business case. Business case, uh, if you you know, like we have so many competition like man management training and you know a lot about the case study. So why do we need a business case and what exactly a business case? So business case, for example, uh, very simply, it's just about the document provide the information to help the sponsor, the stakeholder to decide whether we should invest in that uh, project or not, like whether we should invest our money or time or human resource in it. So why do we need business case? So, you know, like business case is born based on the needs of our company. For example, uh, here, Next slide, you can see there are about seven things why we need a business case, uh, market demand, organizational need, customer request, uh, technological advance, legal requirement, ecological impact, social need. This may seem a loss, but don't be overwhelmed because we have an example for you in the Q&A to help you understand more about it. But I will give you just one example of the market demand. For example, like you are a new startup, a company startup and you want to enter a new market right and or you are a current company you want to develop you want to bring out a new product into the market but you have to worry like is it profitable or not so we have the business case to make analysis to do some comparisons to make sure that in the end uh, our business case help us to uh, bring out the profit or is uh, advantage or beneficial to a company uh, that's it. Uh, next, uh, so what are the main content is in this case? There are four things I think you may understand it easily. First, you stay out what is a problem, what is a opportunity that your company, company is facing, like for example, your, your company wants to increase profit or something. And then you list out all of the options, you know, like all the alternatives, like you think it's a good, uh, that have to uh, resolve the problem. Thirdly, uh, after you give out the options, you have to do the analysis to give out the costs and the benefits, you know, like we do the trade off between what we uh, have gained, what we may lose in our project. And after that, finally, uh, we can have uh, a decision to recommend like which is the most suitable solution for all of the project. So here are four things I want you to keep in mind when you think about the document or the content of a business uh, case. Right. Uh, next one, I want to show you about the organizational process access. So, you know, like you uh, you want to have a project. I know that the project is good for the company. However, when you come, when you, uh, you know, like you launch a campaign or a project, it has to follow the company policies, guidelines, procedures, plans, approaches and standard, you know, like uh, you it doesn't mean like you can do whatever you want, but you have to follow the procedure step by step and to make sure you get approval from the all company. And second thing, I think organizational process assets give you the benefits because you can get access to the previous project. I mean, you get more experience in it, like you will not feel overwhelmed when you have to launch a project by yourself. And last one, I want to talk about the enterprise env environmental factors. So environmental factors mean the thing from the environment may affect your project, right? It's uh, required, like it's from the outside of the company, but it have an influence on your project. So what are they? What are the factors that can affect your um, uh, project? Next, I want to show you the factors. 
uh, here a lot of factors, but uh, sometimes we need to, you know, uh, consider this thing because uh, in the end, the success of your project may be affected by this one. For example, like, uh, do your projects follow the government or industry standards? Or as I said in the previous one, the legal requirements, do your company meet that? And the current position, like the project in management information system, uh, the IT system, do do is it? Uh, good enough for that. So that's it. That's the five main things I want to show you. And uh, as I promised to you from the beginning, now uh, tend to meet the link, we got a very good example here. So look at the picture. You can see uh, we are planning a surprise party party. And just like every other project, it's a small project, you know, like we have to repair the project tractor as well. So uh, because the time is limited, so I just give you three main things I want you to give me preparation when you think about the project charter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here there are three main things I give you in the chat box. You can choose one and tell me which one we need to prepare when we go into plan a surprise party party for our friends. You can choose one of that and give your tell everyone what you think what we should prepare about it. Anyone? <laughs> Okay, so um, so I, I will start by okay. Oh, it's my pleasure to get someone. Uh, okay, so Nyakman, please uh, feel free to talk uh, your thoughts to everyone. Yeah, I think we should uh, prepare about the budget. Yeah, like I think uh, first we uh, we should prepare the cost for buying the material uh, and food, uh, drink mm -hmm. and drink for the party. And this includes the indirect cost for buying the decoration like, um, let me see, like balloons, uh, small fireworks, and so on. And besides, we should uh, prepare budgets for unexpected costs like, for example, there are more friends invited. So we should have money to prepare more food and drink for them, right? And uh, even after the birthday party, friends may go to the... Um, uh, like karaoke or other place, I think like that. Uh, I think the owner uh, of that surprise party should prepare the budget for the cost in advance. Very, very good. Yeah, very perfect. Thank you, Nyakman, a lot, right? So that in a normal talks, when you talk about the budget, but you know, like um, in practice, we do have, uh, you know, the terms for it to prepare for the cost. We know like uh, it's, unexpected cost people might talk about like the cost they know a lot but i want to embrace to you two main costs i think like you should prepare for the risk because you know not every project go perfectly at the way it is so maybe we should spare a little bit and uh, you know preparation is always better than cure so it's better for us to give to spare some money for it thank you very much for your answer by the way and next slide, I want to show you the next part is the next phase in the initiation and how to identify the stakeholders. So because this one is quite, you know, broad, so I give you the very prominent example in the IT. So there are three main parts, for example, like first, who is interested in the value of IT? either investor, like, you know, like uh, the, the manage, uh, the director want to improve the management information of the IT, so they want to invest in it. Or maybe, you know, some in the company, sometimes the internet is so slow and the employee make it hard to, you know, do the work. So they are maybe the stakeholder, which means involved in the value of IT. And uh, the second one is who is capable of providing IT services? Is that the IT managers, uh, developers, or you know, like in some factory, we have the ERP, ERP, like SAP, like you know, the enterprise uh, resources planner. 
to help to manage the the factory better. So we need a SAP consultancy or so on. And last one, we need to uh, get advice from the assurance advisor or security, you know, like IT security. So there's main parts uh, about what I talked today and I hope you can have um, an overview about what a project charter and the first phase of how to identify, uh, identify the stakeholder. So thank you very much for your listening. What a wonderful message, Yung. Thank you very much. Uh, so, but it seems like Penang cannot wait any longer to have some words with our class. So it is Tuanang's turn to make a presentation. Thank you, Yung. My name is Don, and now I'm, and I'm, I'm going to talk about my uh, part. Uh, the last part, uh, you may talk about the input of a project charter. Now I will talk about some elements of minimum, minimum elements of project charter. Uh, you see on the, slide, on the screen, these are some minimum elements of project charter. Well, the first one is business or justification for the project taking the business needs that project address can give everyone direction and clarity regarding project decision and build a foundation of strong leadership from performing organization. When everyone knows why the project is performed, they can laser focus on the end result. Besides that, measuring project objective or related success criteria is very important, you know, a statement of project goals and criteria for success creates a strong statement of what companies is expecting from the project. It ensures everyone is working towards to the same goals and is clear on what those goals are. Some elements including in business justification like um, expected benefit and time scale, cost, risk, and returns on investment analysis. The next thing in elements of project charter is a uh, high level project description needs to be defined well before the project becomes a project. Writing this code into the project charter makes everyone clear about what project creators are thinking. And of course, fully defined scope of work will frequent causes the project management headaches. And you know, the key point of all these things here is that all requirements have to complete satisfactory to stakeholder, sponsor, and customer expectations. Next slide, please. Well, uh, in, this night, in this slide, the first thing uh, is uh, stakeholder. Most objective, most projects have one or two major stakeholder, you know, that need a lot of attention. And the, the project chapter is uh, not approved place for a comprehensive list of all stakeholder. The ones, the, the ones that are primarily important to project should be identified. Um, let's say an example, uh, a project for a new water park that requires some houses to be moved. Need to make sure it works very closely with the owner of this house. Let's see about the constraints of the assumption of the project. A constraint is anything that restricts the of project team and assumption is I even are actually true. Live project has a hard end date. The date can be moved to circumstance outside the control of project, or perhaps the project has a budget. Both of these things are example constraints. Next thing about the summary of my zone schedule. Most projects have my zone that are defined by execute before a project come a project, whether explicitly stated or implied like in the example about building a water park, moving somehow to be completed before construction equipment can be moved in. This milestone defines the project and should be therefore, therefore should be placed into the project charter. However, they do not take place in a detail of project schedule during the project planning stage. Uh, next about the summary budget on project act. No, last slide. Yes. Uh, next year about the summary budget or projects are created in the context of organizational budget constraints. This context should be no no the last line. It is uh, about the summary budget or projects are created in the context of organizational budget constraints. 
This concept should be communicated within the project chapter in order to pass the budgetary constraint into project planning phase. And an indispensable point is the name of the project manager and their authorities levels are also need to be listed in the project charter. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, last but not least, project charter doesn't complete until you've received sign off from sponsor, senior management, and the stakeholder decide that some projects are required approval from external authorities. Those approval, which will have a major impact on the project, can be explicitly stated within the project charter like in the last example about the building new water park the government approval for construction is so integral to the project that it could be a main okay so i hope you have well noted what our beloved friend has said so now, Ms. Nguyen Khánh Linh will be the next person to have a talk with our class today. Hi, my name is Khánh Linh. Um, so up to this point, we have come up with the project charter and have identified the stakeholders. So next we will go to um, establish a preliminary project scope statement. So before we start, I have a small question for you. Uh, from your opinion, can someone give me an idea why we need the project scope statement when we already have the project data? So what is the main difference between them? What is the necessity? Uh, can someone um, raise your voice? Or you can chat in the chat box and um, Nhung will record your uh, answer and give you a bonus later. Someone, guys, you um, just talk freely uh, from your opinion. You don't need to be accurate. Um, okay. So, uh, so I will give you an answer. Um, the project charter is a high level description of the project, so it will be more general. Um, so therefore, we need a project scope statement um, to dive into the specific detail in order to give the stakeholders uh, the common understanding of the project scope, enable the planning process that follows. Next slide, please. So there are four inputs to the project scope statement. That is the project charter, the project um, statement of work, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Um, so um, next slide, please, because these four factors have already been introduced to you uh, in the previous slide, so I won't go into detail. Um, so now we come to the content of the scope of statement uh, of the project. So there are 14 points that should be contained inside the scope of statement. First, the first three factors are already included in the charter. You can see the project objectives, the characteristics of the project or the service of the project and the product objectives. Okay, you can find this in the um, SOW, the statement of work and the charter. And the fourth point is a very, very important point that you need to take note. So the project deliverables. The project deliverables is any unique and verifiable product result or capability to perform a service, a project that is required to complete your project. So what needs to be delivered in detail, okay? And um, also, in the project scope statement, you should include the uh, customer requirements for both the products and the project. And exclusions from scope, or in other words, the project boundaries. So what is it? 
It is a description of tasks, items, and actions that are specifically excluded from the project scope. So why we need to exclude something from the scope? Well, it's very simple because it helps us to avoid redundancy work uh, outside the scope of the project, okay? We don't need to do uh, something that is unnecessary. Next, please. And also, uh, the uh, next three elements, constraints, assumptions, high-level risk list and definition, again, can be found in the JAKTA. Also, you need to establish uh, project milestones. So a project milestone is a task that shows an important achievement in the project. The milestone should represent a clear sequence of events that incrementally build up until your project is complete. Okay, so you can track the process uh, of your project uh, easier. And um, next, you uh, should include the initial work breakdown structure inside the scope statement of your project. Um, simply put, the WBS is the process of subdividing the project deliverables and the project work into smaller components so it's easier to manage. And also, you should estimate the cost associated with the project. Um, some uh, requirements. You should um, state out some requirements for the configuration management and some uh, project, the project acceptance criteria. The project acceptance criteria is also very important. It is a set of conditions that is required to be met before the deliverables are accepted. Oh. And um, before, okay, okay. I will um, give you a small example for you to grab all of the ideas. So let's say, um, Katie have a project. Her project is to bake a dozen cookies for her neighbor. Okay, so um, she will bake 12 round chocolate chip cookies that are seven centimeter in diameter. So the product scope description of her project is 12 round chocolate chip cookies with a seven diameter, seven centimeter diameter, right? Very simple. And her product acceptance criteria is for the cookies to be unburned, to not be burned, of good quality, okay? And the deliverables of her project is one dozen cookies and a paper plate that, um, she, will, that she will place the cookies upon to bring to her neighbor's store. That is what needs to be delivered in her project. And the project exclusion of Katie is her recipe will not be submitted or provided to her neighbor. Okay, that is her secret. That is what uh, she makes money of. She cannot give it to anyone. And the project constraint of Katie is that the cookies must be delivered by 4 p.m. this evening. So that is the time constraint. Or you can say the money constraint is she should buy the ingredients under $20 only. Yeah, uh, and I hope that you will have a um, better understanding after this little example. Now, I will conclude the initiation phase by a chart, a diagram. Next, please. Oh, sorry. Um, so, the sequence of initiating process includes three, uh, six steps. First, you need to develop a business case. This will explain why the project is necessary and how it will succeed. Second step is to conduct a feasibility study. So, in this step, you will research the reason for the project and determine if it will succeed or not. Thirdly, you will come to a stage where um, you will determine how the project will be structured and executed by um, the following documents, such as develop the project chapter and develop the definition report. 
And now you come to the fourth step is to appoint a project team. Okay, uh, if you want to uh, conduct a project, you must have a team to do it, right? Uh, and in this step, you must find suitable uh, people with the right skills, with the right experience to execute the project successfully. Next, you will set up a project office. In this step, we we'll, <clears throat> we'll set up an office to define where the project manager and the support staff are located and they can assist with the project. And finally, the sixth step is to perform phase review. So in this step, you will review the entire project initiation stage to ensure that you will miss nothing. And in later stage, you continue to review your work as monitoring and controlling in one of the five phases uh, of the project management life cycle. So uh, the review phase uh, will uh, be conducted throughout the project. And that brings me to the end of the initiation phase. Now we will come to the next phase, planning, planning process. Well noted, with thanks, Ling. So continue right away. I would like to invite Mr. Nguyen Tấn Huy. And uh, okay, can you hear me well? Yes. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Kanan. And well, uh, we will. Uh, move to the planning process. And well, we have successfully finished the project initiating processes and published the project just and really mainly scope statement. And now the project is officially underway and stakeholders have been informed. And besides, there is a management buy-in on the project and the project manager have been assigned and also the Rochester objective and the reason have been identified. And therefore, a solid foundation for landing process is placed. And in general, you know, the planning process should include the following processes, such as uh, preparation, planning, uh, implementation, monitoring, and finally, evolution and closing. And in addition, uh, in preparation and planning, uh, we have some uh, surfaces like set up a project management unit, uh, set up organizational structure, and final, the project planning and schedules. And next slide, please. And well, and the first process in planning process is the developed project management plan process. And what is the developed project management plan? Uh, that is the process of documenting uh, the action necessary to define, repair, iterate, and coordinate on subsidiary plans. And the process, the project management plan become the primary source of information for how the project will be planned, executed, and monitored, and controlled, and final closing. And as you can see the diagram in your screen, the main input of this process, that's in the process charter, uh, output from planning processes, uh, enterprise environment total factor, and final, the organizational process asset. And the main output of this uh, process, of course, that's in the project management plans, and next slide, please. And after that, we should define scope. And define scope is the process of developing a detailed reduction of the rochers and products. And as you can see, the input of the, this process is the, the Rochester ch charter uh, requirement uh, documentation and the last one is the organizational process asset. And the output of the project is the project core statement and the project document update. And then we will create the is as 
that is time for work with our structure. That's in the process of subdividing projects deliverable and projects work into smaller and more manageable components. And as you can see, the input of the process uh, include the project scope statement, uh, requirements documentation, and the, the last one is the organizational process asset. And the main uh, output of the, this process, that's either uh, work structure, uh, work breakdown structure, work breakdown structure dictionary, and the scope space line. And the last one is the project document update. And that is my presentation. And uh, Nam and Khan will continue our representation. Thank you. Okay, really appreciate. So continue with the presentation is a very insightful speech from two lovely boys, Nam and Khan, to whom I would like to leave the stage right away. Khan, are you there? Uh, so sorry, um, my friend have some internet connection problems. So uh, uh, during while waiting for them, uh, do you have any question relating to Hui's uh, presentation or Ling's presentation? Maybe we can uh, take this uh, chance to have a small break for your brain to release the stress. <laughs> yes. yes. Why not? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. Uh, no worry. That is the project. Okay. <laughs> In reality, many uncertainty, right? And the way it to foresee is and react with that to overcome that okay actually your your rope is so great so far okay <laughs> yeah so in this case i have some work <laughs> yeah some work your yeah, leadership and um, actually this chapter we talk a lot why you know, it of course also it like a project. You we start smooth slowly, slowly. Okay, yes. and very interesting. Now we talk and we think, and we have more information yet about the concept, the definition, the process, the interactions, the example, and. The next several weeks, we go to the technique. Okay, about yes. critical part management, etc. Okay, raise your hand if your group is ready. Hand. Okay, I keep talking. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're back. So we back to the professor. Okay, okay. Just yes, one, one more thing. This is a good chance when you present. Please turn on your camera. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so please allow us to continue our presentation. Now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Do Quoc Hang. Are you there? Hang on. Uh, Hang, if you're there, you can open your camera and uh, speak to us. Yeah, you you know that communication is very important. I underline again how to make sure proper communications in terms of technical and understanding. Okay, so go okay. ahead, Han. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry for the problem. No problem. Uh, thanks, Tan Hui and you and Yung. Um, yeah, Hui, uh, please, can you open your camera? Yes, can you open the camera so that uh, you can convey the knowledge? You can have a small interaction with uh, 
um, the class. So I think that uh, Khang's connection is not good. So uh, he he would not prefer to open the camera. Yeah, uh, you can see his connection. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can continue. Can you start, uh, Khang? Um, sorry for not. I, I I cannot turn the camera on. Um. As Tongwe has mentioned WBS in the previous part, so I would recall a little bit. So what is rating a WBS? Rating WBS is the process of subdividing project developables and project into smaller and more manageable component. But WBS can be rated with a combination of our structure, process structure, and organizational structure. So here is a characteristic of an upper structure. Um, we can see that an upper structure may have many components, and each component consists of many subcomponents as well. Uh, in order to make it clear about this, here is an example of our structure for the road building project. Uh, with a level zero project name in this example, is road building project. Two deliverables are road and land clearance. In a deliverable road consists of many components like size, design, foundation, road, and maintenance. Continuously, uh, the maintenance component also have many subcomponents like service, drainage, and utilities. Next slide, please. Um, we will continue with the process structure. Uh, here is an example of process structure for a road building project. Um, and we can see that the process structure has four phases. Those are design, build, inspect, and terminate. In the build phase, it's comprised of four sub-phase, sub mobilize, procurement, build, and cleanup. In advance of mobilize subway, there is the time, that is the time when the plans getting approved. And at the time, whenever the build survey is done, the construction is complete. That is our control point. Next slide, please. Um, overall, there are two diagrams. These are two diagrams representing the output structure and the process structure of the road building project, which we have just run over the slide above. The output the output structure follow the hierarchical flow with the developers, component, and subcomponent. The process one follow the phase four with a phase and subphase following the timeline of the project. Next, please. And one of the most important things you must consider when rating WBS is choosing a project time frame for the process evaluation. I show in the slide. Different management level has different control period, different time frame. Apply for the top management level, the control period is in month, and for the mid middle management level is in week, and for the operating one, which require frequent evaluation, so the appropriate time frame is in day. For example, in the graph on the right hand side, the summary plan, which is the top management level, level zero. So the time frame corresponding is in month. And the detail plan, lower level, lower management level, need frequent checkup. Therefore, the fitting control period is in day. Next, please. Um, as I have stated earlier, WBS can be perfectly created by gathering information from output structure, process structure, and organizational structure. Next, please. Um, so we move to the project scope management management section. Managing the project scope is the primarily concerned with defining and controlling what is and what is not included in the project. One of the key process in the project management is collect requirement. So 
what is collecting requirement? Collect requirement is the process of defining and documenting stakeholder needs to meet the project objective. And the key benefit of this project is that it provides the basis of defining the product scope and project scope. The input of this project are project charter, stakeholder register, and the output corresponding are the requirement documentation, requirement traceability matrix, and requirement management plan. So we continue with the project cost manage management. Project cost management include the process which employ in, in planning, estimating, budgeting, financing, funding, managing and controlling costs so that the project can be complete within the approved budget. One of the key process in this is estimating cost. So what is estimating cost? Estimating cost is the process of developing an approximation of the monetary resources needed to complete the project activities. This project is performed periodically throughout the process they needed. The input of this process are scope baseline, project schedule, HR plan, risk register, organizational structure asset, and enterprise environmental factor. The output of this process are project docu document update, and activity estimate, and basis of estimate. And uh, this is all of my presentation. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Nam, and now I will be responsible for showing you some other part of planning process. Uh, develop schedule is the process of analyzing activity sequence, duration, resource requirements, and schedule constraint to create a project schedule. Uh, the diagram looks so complicated, right? Uh, but take it easy. Step by step, you can easily see that there are nine inputs and four outputs. Uh, therefore, in the next slide, I want to explain more about the meaning of each process instead of reading these input and output. Um, of each, uh, that you can easily see by yourself, okay? Uh, for the next slide is about the plan quality. Uh, plan quality is the process of identifying quality requirements and standard for the project and product and documenting how the project will be demonstrate compliance. And the quality, uh, quality planning should be performed in parallel with the other project planning process. Uh, for example, uh, propose change in the product to meet identify the quality standard may require a uh, cost or schedule adjustment and a detailed risk analysis to the impact to the plan. And the quality planning techniques discussed here are those most frequently used on projects. There are many others that may be useful on certain projects or in some application area. And, uh, the next one we will be talking about the develop human resources plan. Uh, develop human resource plan is the process of identifying uh, and documenting project roles, responsibility, and required risk skills, reporting relationship, and creating a staff management plan. Uh, human resources planning is used to determine and identify human resources with the necessary skill required for their project success. Uh, the human resources plan document project roles and responsibility, project organization chart and staffing management plan, including the timetable for staff acquisition and release. Uh, it may also include identification of training needs, uh, team building strategy plan or for recognition and reward program. Uh, uh, the other part of the planning process is plan communication. Uh, plan communication is the process of determining the project stakeholder information needs and defining a communication approach. 
uh, the plan communication process respond to the information and communication need of the stakeholder. Uh, for example, who need what information, they will need it, how, how it will be given for them, and by whom, uh, why or why all projects share so the need to communicate project information, the, inf the information or needs and methods of distribution very widely, identifying the information needs of the stakeholder and determining a suitable means of meeting those needs are important factors for the project success. Um, the next one we are um, going to describe about the plan risk management. Uh, plan risk management is the process of defining how to conduct risk management activity for the project. Uh, you can see in the feature, uh, careful and explicit planning enhance the probability of success for the five author risk management process. Planning risk management process is important to ensure that the degree, type, and visibility of risk management are commensurate with both the risk and the importance of the project to the organization. Uh, planning is also important to provide sufficient resource and time for risk management activities and to establish and agree upon basics for evaluating risks. And the plan risk management process should begin as a project is conceived uh, and should be complete early during project planning. Uh, and the last one uh, about the planning process is plan procurement. Uh, plan procurement is the process of documenting projects purchasing decision, specifying the approach, and identifying potential sellers. Uh, it identifies the project needs which can best be or must be met by acquiring product, service, or result outside the project organization versus the project needs which are, can be accomplished by the project team. Uh, this project uh, involves determining whether to acquire outside support and if so, what to acquire, how to acquire it, and how much is needed, and when to acquire it. Uh, when the project obtain product, service, and result required for the project performance from outside performing organization, the process from plan procurement through close procurement are performed to each team to be acquired. And that are about the planning process. And hopefully this information will help you to have a clear view of the planning process. And you will be able to learn about each percent through the course. And thanks for paying attention and listening. What a very insightful speech from two lovely boys. Now, last but not least important, Mr. Zhang Bui is hopeful to bring the most valuable knowledge to you. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Yong. Let's finish the let two week process the lesson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Next slide, slide, please. Yeah, selection <laughs> depends on the company, the people serving on selection committee, criteria used the process, and it can be purely financial. Zhang, can you speak a bit louder? Thank you. Okay. And it can be purely financial, it can be purely marketing, can be based on public perception or political perceptions, but in most cases, the decision is based on a combination of all of the mentioned approach or even more. Next slide. There are four states in course planning, which are demonstrated by this triangle. On the top of the triangle mm -hmm. is strategic, determine organizational strategy, goals, and Objective. Next, business area analysis. Analyze how various business areas can help to achieve strategic goals. Then, cross selection mean identify potential causes to help with strategic goals. And on the bottom, resource allocation, allocate resources, select the process. After cross selection and planning, 
there are eight steps in the analysis. First, define the alternatives. Second, determine the study period. Third, provide estimate of the cash flow for each alternative. Fourth, specific the interest rate MARR. Fifth, select the measure of effectiveness. For example, the criteria for certain success. Six, compare the alternative. Seven, perform sensitive analysis. I select the preferred alternative. When it comes to financial transaction, we have to review some familiar terms that we have learned on engineering economy course. It is a uh, recent work, future work, annual work analysis. Internal grade of return IRR, which is used in financial analysis to estimate the profitability of potential investment. Return on investment ROI is used to evaluate how well an investment has performed and also payback time. I have told you which design of selection. Now, there are nine selection methods mathematical model, benefit measuring method, cost benefit, scoring model, cash flow analysis technique, net present value. Pay tax periods, discounted cash flow, internal freight return. Subsequently, we will choose a plan to empower our project. This decision will be mainly based on the policy, regulation, logistics. For example, whether or the location is in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, and if Ho Chi Minh City, then it should side on District 1 or District 7 or to the city. Finally, I'm going to talk about SWOT analysis. We also learn SWOT in the course marketing. It consists of strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and breadth. Strength is our advantage. What makes us better than the others? Weaknesses is what factor we need to improve, what factor we must avoid. Opportunity, what are the last strength and how the work has changed. Threat, what are the obstacles and who are our competitors. Among work analysis, strength and weaknesses are internal factors, opportunity and breadth are external factors. That's the end of the lecture. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, then you will answer it for you. Okay, so great. Uh, uh, hello, student. Yes, sir. So, group two. It's a great work. Huh? You, you have many uh, MC. Huh? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, thank you, Mihan. You have a very, very good leadership style. Okay. We work with each other. Uh, for planning until this presentation. I know you also with the proof, charts, present, etc. It's a part of it. Uh, again, thank you, group two. Um, students, um, today we have many uh, topics. Talk about WBA, talk about uh, selections, uh, evaluation, etc. It is a process. Mainly, mainly today, for you to know the component of process. And we have some introduction. The next week, the next several weeks, we will utilize and go into detail. With that, uh, I think. Uh, Group two, I continue uh, with the, the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And how about Dao Yu Long? Hello. Dạ, thầy ơi, nhà bạn Lâm có tan nên hôm nay bạn đã xin nghỉ ạ. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to hear that, but uh, at least uh, we know the reason he absent. Okay. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, so can I hold now? Continue? Yes, yeah. continue. Yeah. Yes, to present. Yes. <laughs> Let the MC do her job. <laughs> So now that we have reached this part of today's presentation, so I would like to say thank you to all the effort my teammates have made in order to summarize and synthesize all the knowledge. Uh, group two has prepared a small mini game. So every correct answer will receive a bonus point only if you can provide the correct explanation verbally. Okay, so on the screen, on in the chat box, um, we have provided the code for you to enter the game. So uh, please, Hank, can you uh, open the presentation? Yes, just give me a sec. Please access to the site, insert your code and uh, your ID, and we shall begin in a few minutes. I guess you have uh, known the rules for this type of game, but uh, I would like to repeat the rule. So the the end the question you will have to use two devices uh, to to play the game uh, because the the question will not uh, be provided be appeared on your screen. It will appear in the sc the screen of us. In the, it will be in our screen so that you should use uh, another device to play the game okay on your screen will only be the uh, the question the answer a b c d not the question you have to look the question you have to find the question in our screen okay so please i repeat use two devices you can play Kahoot on your phone or you have to open another tab on your laptop. So uh, we have a tool, we have a tool to know who is the fastest answer, who has the fastest answer. So uh, anyone with the fastest answer for each question will get a bonus. And at the same time, the one, the person who gives the explanation verbally, that means you have to open your micro, you have to open your micro for the answer. Uh, you will also have a, a, another bonus point.
20 more students, please. I can see we have 75 people in our class and uh, there's 57, there are 57 in Kahoot. About 20 more to go, 20 more to go. Please hurry up. We will wait for about uh, two more minutes. We shall start in one more minute. Okay, it's uh, 12.05. I guess we should start now, Hank. Okay, the first question is on the screen. The number of steps, common project management process. This is too easy, <laughs> way too easy. Oh my God, oh my God, 22 people choose four. Okay, so let me make this clear a little bit. So there will be four steps of project life cycle. Okay, but the question is project management process. There will be five, okay? 
Right. Okay, so this is quite an easy question, but and I don't know why you're <laughs> make too many mistakes. So let's next. The sequence of steps in project management process. This is also an easy question. Very good. Very good. So since it is quite an easy question, I would like to move right away to the next question. I have mentioned this in my presentation in my part, so if you listen carefully, you will know. Yes. So this part I have I have mentioned in my part. So anyone who listened carefully will surely answer this uh, question correctly. Yeah. Next, please. I can see that the the podium is still this guy. So another easy question. I have also men mentioned this in my pres in my part. So if you listen carefully, you will do it right. Next, please. Let's see our winner. Let's see. Next, please. If, uh, if I'm right. So this is quite an easy question, right? If you listen carefully, you will answer this. You'll be able to answer this. Uh, I don't have any question to ask you in this. So next. Congratulations to 13 people <laughs> saying correctly. Oh, I can see that there is a, a there's a change in the level. Um, this is a theo theo theory question. So uh, this is all about the information that we have provided. Uh, next, please. Next question. Okay, congratulations on 23 people. So I have some questions for you to get bonus. Okay, 
um, can you tell me why why A and B and D are not the legal requirements? Can you tell me uh, where in the in the answer that you can recognize it? It is not the legal part. Please open your micro and uh, you can get a bonus. Jung has provided some hint for you. You can use it to get bonus. Um, can you try this one? Yes. Um, so the, the key point here is the topics materials that I can see in the the answer C. Okay, so uh, can you tell me why why A and B and D are not legal? Uh, are not legal related? So it's not something related to um, related to deaths or the hands of people. So um, I don't think that meets the legal requirements from the authority. Yeah. So you think that, for example, a environmental impact, it is not some legal uh, related thing? Yeah, it's kind of in general, not something uh, uh, vital or uh, bring debts to people. Yeah, that's... yeah. It's kind of ecological thing, right? Not mm -hmm. legal thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ming. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, so in this question, I have another question for you to get bonus. So uh, can anyone tell me how to, how can we identify the intention of a business case? Zoom has said in her part. If you listen carefully, you will be able to provide the correct answer. This is very easy, a the theory question. Can you list uh, some of the ways that we can identify the intention of a business case? Please open uh, your micro and you will get bonus. Okay, okay, Minh, yes, Phạm Nhật Minh. Very good. Um, yes, I'm going to the slide uh, number 18. The external project uh, SOW can be received from the customer as a part of uh, by documents uh, like request of proposal information or part of a contract. So therefore, all the answer both are accepted. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Just like you have said, hint inside in slide 18. Yes, yeah, thank you. You will have one bonus point. Okay, let's move to the next question. Right, yes. 22 per people answer correctly. So I think this is quite an easy um, question. So let's move quickly.
Wow. Yes. It's, it seems that you have listened too very carefully to Zoom. <laughs> okay. So in this uh, in in this uh, question, I plan to give you a question, but uh, okay, let's pass quickly to another one. Okay, the answer for this question is false. So who can correct this uh, sentence? Please raise your hand so you can get a bonus. This is very easy. Okay, uh, yes, uh, Quang Ming. Okay, so um, the correct sequence will be um... The project chapter is developed after the project management statement of work and before the project management plan. Yes, <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. I hope that you will remember this carefully. Now, next, please. This is another theory question, uh, but it seems like um, uh, the, the number who answer correctly is still uh, too small. <laughs> okay, next please. So here are some... Yeah, I, I can see that too many of you mistaken between business need and business case. Now let's move to the solution. So this is uh, the three elements in the content of SOW. So it is the business need, not the business case, okay? Another theory question. Next, please. Sorry, this is this question is, is quite. Uh, um, it's in the slide. If you focus, you can answer it. <laughs>
Okay, very good. So I can notice that uh, this ID is still on the top. <laughs> very good. Okay, please notice that we have two answers to select, okay? good I can see that many of you have the correct answer okay so uh, on the screen right now is our two characteristics of project deliverables okay so uh, bear this in mind Yes, very good. We're so proud of you. <laughs> it seems that we have conducted a very uh, efficient, efficient uh, presentation. Okay, let's move to uh, the solution. Yes, project scope management does include collect requirement, define scope, and create WBS, work breakdown structure. Right, now let's move to next. Okay, so I just got proud of you in the last one and now you let me down in this one. <laughs> this is a fully uh, theory question. So uh, now let me remind you a little bit. The inputs of the defined scope process are the first one, project charter. The next one is project SWO. Next is enterprise environmental factors. And lastly, organizational process assets. Okay. Very good. Hopefully only two of you choose. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I can see that there is a little, a small change in the scoreboard. Um, yes. Yeah, so the answer is scope, scope baseline. It's one of the outputs of create the VBS process. Okay, next. Very good. Oh, why, why there are 25 people choose A? Now let's move to the explanation. Develop project management plan process is the first process in the planning, okay? Remember, develop project management plan, okay? Next, please. Well, wow, this is quite a difficult one. Oh, 
Okay, so I can see that this is quite a, a difficult uh, question. So here is the answer for this. So this question is asking which of the choices is the most effective way to move through project planning. So starting with the work breakdown structure immediately after obtaining a project charter skips the most important steps of defining the scope and other activities. High level assumptions are determined in project initiating. Quality metrics in uh, D, in the answer D, are determined as part of the quality management plan, not after it. Okay, it is a part of it, not after it. So the activity list is created before the network diagram. So that is the best option. I hope you uh, can understand this. Yes, uh, thank you, Ving, for joining with us. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, so um, for this reason, we should focus on the word detailed, okay? Detailed, such a budget is created during the project planning. Okay, so I can see that um, some of you are still mistaken. So I would like to explain this again. In the project management process, the project budget, detailed risk assessment and project management plan come after the schedule is created. Okay, so the only answer that could be an input is the work breakdown structure. Okay, so I have some question for you to get bonus. So who can tell me, who can tell me A, B, and C is uh, included in what process group? They, they define what process group, A, B, and C. D is to define the planning process group action. What about A, B, and C? What do they define? Which process group? Okay, uh, because uh, Phan Nhật Minh is, uh, <laughs> you have too many bonus points, so I would like to uh, leave the opportunity to concern, okay? Uh, a is for uh, execute, execute process, uh, initiate, and uh, C is for uh, closing, finalizing. Uh, can you repeat? I, I cannot hear. Uh, a is for... Uh, execute B is for initializing and uh, B is for finalizing. Is it okay? C is for closing, right? Yes, okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh yeah, one bonus point for concern. Thank you. So, I would like to repeat um, A is to define the executing process group, B is to define the initiating process group. And C is to define the closing process group. Okay, very good.
Okay, very good. Right. So, uh, yeah, another uh, another opportunity for you to get bonus. So we have the correct answer is D. Who can tell me A, B, and C is a benefit of which process? In the five process? Yes. Quang uh, Minh, uh, yes. Okay, so um, so for the answer A, you can see the um, stakeholder expectations and results. So it's kind of related to the executing process. And um, yes. for B, we can see um, the way to track and review the progress. So it's um, connected with the monitoring and controlling. And uh, last one, C. Mm. So you can see the align the expectations with the purpose. So it's kind of um, initiating process, I guess. Perfect. Yes, perfect answer. Thank you oh, very much, Ming. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Well, Ming has provided the full answer, the full explanation for this question. Right. I'd like to move to the next one. So sad that still there are people who don't make it right. So as according to my memory, it is in the, uh, in the slide. The answer for this question is in the slide. So please read the, the slide carefully. So we will fill in this uh, boxes, project cost management, okay? So uh, it is uh, close to the end of today's mini game. So please uh, do not lose hope. <laughs> you can still get bonus point, okay? Please try your best. Yes, very good. Okay, so I have uh, we have repeated this this uh, part many times in our presentation. So all five process groups are addressed in every project. Okay, it is the responsibility of the project manager to determine the level of attention to give to each process group. Okay, next please. Okay, this is quite an easy question. So the four stages of planning project selection are firstly strategic, and then business area analysis. Then we have project selection and lastly resource allocation. Please keep this in your mind. Okay, this is quite an easy thing. Wow, so this means many of you still remember so clearly about engineering economy. Very good. This is a very, uh, very familiar term. Uh, IRR stands for internal rate of return and ROI stands for return on investment. Okay, just to remind. The last question.
Yes, very good. So anyone who have attended a marketing course must remember this part really uh, careful, right? Okay, so this is the end of the mini game. So I hope that you have enjoyed. Uh, let's see the winner of today's mini game. Uh, the top five, uh, the top five highest score students will get the bonus point from our teacher. Okay. So it, huh? Ah, right. Oh, the the team works so well. Um, thank you very much, Rupu. Um, student, do you have any questions? Hmm? So I would like to review before that. You see that uh, our uh, chapter today um, cover a lot of theory. Okay, and it's very helpful for you to step by step, one by one. Uh, any questions? <laughs> uh, let me review again. Do um, group two and uh, yeah. See. And I see that Phạm Nhật Minh, Nguyễn Nguyễn, Văn Minh, and we concern you have a great involvement in the club. So beside that, both the former, we have a bonus also. Let's see. Um, let's see, uh, you, you see here in the screen, I would like to, um, yeah, to share and get up again. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see how how can I figure out how to in such kind of thing. Uh, oh. It no. Let's see. Hmm. You see, this is the update, okay? The update from uh, the latest uh, textbook, very thick, okay, textbook. We have in the row here, let me see how. Um, like this one, okay, from here to here. Uh, so we have five new initiatives, okay, um, plannings, executives, monitoring and control, okay. So we call, uh, what is that? PZ? Hmm. Of uh, process group, process group. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's nature. Uh, starts we think and we plan. After that, we implement, executing, and for sure, when implementing. 
we have to know what going on. Also, one hand, you need to implement. And when you implement, okay, you need to monitor to make sure what going on will be under control, okay? So I say, And again, control to pack this in the right directions or to correct it. Okay. Right. Many things in monitoring and control. Okay. Sometimes they say uh, supervision. Supervision. Everything must be under control, okay? But it doesn't mean that we need to control everything, okay? We know today is the process. So you see, oh, how to prioritize which process when to, uh, to be focused more, okay? So, another, um, let's see, let's see how a uh, process here. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick one. This one. Another, another thing. Another thing. E. On this one, okay. I think we need another color. Another color. Mm. Okay. So you see, K A. What is K A? Can anyone answer me what is K A? Hmm? Integration, scope, schedule, course, quality, resource, communications, tricks, procurement, uh, stakeholder. Okay. Okay. So, what is KA? What the KA stand for? Hmm? Kevin, are you there? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Yes, so you can see KA here. What is KA? I think... Uh... <laughs> KA here. Okay. What is KA, okay? Key, key account. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> key okay. account. Yeah, key account. Okay. Key account. You seem to be very good in a cell. <laughs> okay, key account. Key account in cell. Yes, key account in cell. Maybe customer. And you appoint one people to take care of customer. And the biggest customer in terms of volume or revenue or importances. You can see it. But here, KA is knowledge area. Knowledge area versus process room. Okay? Here is knowledge area. Okay? That's clear. Win. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. teacher. Knowledge area. I update this one, and you see this inside. It, okay. First, for example, integration. What does it mean integration? Many things happen. How to integrate it? You are system engineer. How to integrate? Okay. First, in the process. 
of initiating, you develop the chapter. And the next process planning, you develop project management program. And in executing, you direct and manage project work, project knowledge, you see? Mm, let me see how. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let me start one. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Let's see. Now, go to closing. We also have. Monitoring, we also have. Okay, let me see. Staff, is that the staff here? The point here. Okay. And most of the project you see is it, 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 uh, tangible. You see most of the project by this one or this one. But you know that on the project, normally they have five process loop. Okay? So, from here to here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, a scope. Like a scope, we define it. First of all, before that, we know the requirement. Define the scope and create the WBA. We will learn in detail in the WBA approach. Okay. For example, in monitoring. Okay. Now, let me go to here. Okay. Validate the scope. What does it mean? Hmm? Will this scope work able for the project? Okay. Will it? And <coughs> does it cover own? Hmm? It work able or not? Some project we have a scope but cannot work. Because it's not cover or because of the old technology. You, you see? I did any anyone in the class give a sample. Hmm? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this one very important. Okay. So stop by and give a sample. Validate a scope. For example, now. I, I left it here. For example, now you have a project. Okay. Project to produce uh, TV, TV set. Okay. And the scope. The old technology. Old tech. Okay. I say, oh, no, cannot. It, we comply with the scope like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Okay. The second. Okay. Scope doesn't cover all the things, all the necessary things. Okay. Okay, so we validate the scope, etc. Now, scheduling the next two weeks, we talk about is a network activity. We put in the sequence, the constraint of the sequence, what first, what after. Okay, so beyond that, 
we know okay we plan for the schedule activity sequence here estimate the duration time okay after that we develop a schedule same you see because it's a process with many components okay so call in the area of code estimate the code how to determine budget top up uh, bottom up or top down okay yeah and the quality management for the project okay and everything you see here they get control control monitoring and control okay uh, plan for quality and resource okay resource way resource over or under the resource availability some resource will not available for example right now hmm? uh, if you have a project like constructions project constructions project do you have its resource now no you know so what should we do okay we plan okay executing how can we acquire the resource now we have a construction uh, project for example say in district one how can you carry out it now okay and the next very important is communications okay how to keep communicating among shareholders huh? so <laughs> the next ones rick everywhere every time Okay, but the better we manage the risk, it brings benefits for us. <laughs> so that's why if we ignore it, yeah, it's horrible. Ah, oh, many negative impacts properly because when things go wrong, a lot of uh, negative impact but when we manage it well okay it brings benefit <laughs> okay okay so another thing procurement we have one chapter about procurement why Hmm? Why we need to focus on procurement? Can any one of you answer? Hello? Yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, I think because uh, garbage in, garbage out, if we, we <laughs> buy uh, the materials that are not of good quality, yeah. and yeah, so it will ensure that the output won't be good. Yeah, thank you, Kanlin. Yeah. Okay, you have a very good answer. Okay, one more thing. You see, long ago, we used to uh, carry out the project. Uh, <laughs> um, we do it. But now or then, most of the thing we buy, we buy, just buy, and let's talk about procurement a little bit because we have one chapter about that. You you are right, you are right. Why? Because now or day, huh? 
almost ha dễ dễ hẹp ra cọc ha eighty five percent ok from procurement ok eighty five percent Oh. <laughs> you can see big amount. So we need to focus on that for sure. The first, the second, we buy a lot. And if we don't buy the right thing, you are correct. Right. 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 I might be multiplied by. Um, okay. Multiply by. Right. I add, huh? Right. Amount. Right. Item. Right. Time. Right. Price. Okay. <laughs> At least four, right? So it's so important. Okay. So again, this activity. Okay, this activity. So in order to know certain of components, we see many things inside this slide. Only this slide. Okay. Enough for you. Okay. Let's see stakeholder. Okay. Key stakeholder impact the project the most. So with that, we see uh, how okay to have their support. Actually, in the project. Um a lot of things uh, we have to pay attention to and especially stakeholder okay so uh, I write down here some kind of uh, project okay because you are engineer and you learn uh, project management but they don't you know, they ask you oh EPC uh, it's a uh, Engineering, engineering, procurement, and construction. Now, don't worry about that. You can search in internet and especially project manager, project team member, the law. Okay, we have to comply. Oh, listen. Okay, now it's available in Vietnam law. If you go for EPC, they have a law. Yeah, they have the disease. Okay, for EPC, comply with that. DT also have, DOT also have, and now, okay, now. This one. Okay, TPP. They enable from private to governments to own own party involved. Normally, if you eat, eat urgently and you need to focus on another core business, you might need contractor to do this for you. Okay? Key. Okay. After that, they just hand over for us. Okay, I write down here some example. Okay, BT, you know BT, deal and transfer, BOT, you know. Uh, for example, a lot of BOT in uh, transportation, uh, transport. for example, um, the tones. Okay. Okay. They build, they operate, and after that, 
it transfer a lot of things. Okay, let me review some more. Uh, very important is project chapter. Oh, project chapter. Even you work in engineering, but you should know how to write a project chapter, how to read. Okay, what are minimum components in the chapter to convey the message? Okay. Why we need it? Okay, so project the, in terms of process, you need to know the input and carry out and identify the output. Okay, project chapter normally uh, everyone should be able to handle, especially for you. Okay, I talk one more thing about access. Access, it means property, right? Hello, class. It's a property. Sometimes it's intangible, but it's a property. So what does it mean property? We have a property, you know, to protect. Yet, Jung Dam. I X belong to the company, and yeah. the company has the right to or do everything with it. Yeah, correct. For example, every company they have policy. Maybe they write down, how maybe not. Okay, they have guidance, procedure, plan, approach, and standard. Big player. Big player. They create a standard. And also, big player select the best standard to follow. Okay? Right? So, big one. Previous project. Previous project, it means sometimes they fail. And now, it is their property. They learn from that, you know. So failure is a property also, okay? Because based on their experience, even they fail, they learn a lot. They share the lesson, okay? They share the lesson. That's why they develop, okay? So about the uh, enterprise uh, 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 okay uh, again stakeholder identify and work well with stakeholder now uh, contain a project chapter we see inside okay a little bit about WPS network. We go to detail. Okay. WPS like the core, the tool. Ah, uh, maybe 50 years before in uh, England. Okay. They developed this one. And after that, uh, US applied it very well. Okay. We talk about a little bit about the sequence, okay? And net good, net to with we how to optimize the sequence, okay? And focus planning, okay? the hearts of any management activity, okay? And just for the viewpoint, I just write down here some key thing. For example, it is a process, and we talk a lot, but how to start? <laughs> For example, this will with a project, how to select a project and prioritize the project, okay? 
Yes, for sure. When you go to work, you have many projects. <laughs> Potential project. How you select the project from some uh, proposal. And after that, which one go first? Because of the value, the value chains. You, you, you learn supply chain, you know value chain. Because of this, create the value of this. So first, the sequence, OK? In order to prioritize, or in terms of making benefits, which one more important? Or in terms of risk management, which one reduce the most risk and brings most benefit? Okay, I give some example like that. And here, let's see. Um, today, you just uh, keep the uh, soft copy of this uh, uh, lecture. So if you go for any project, just read, check, for example, strategy, ah, this is for long term, huh? and this front, huh? How to success, okay, right? Here, okay. You just check one by one, etc. Okay, and many way to select. Okay, you also learn from engineering economy course. Okay, and applies. I give you some example. Okay, for size analysis, very important if you want to start. Okay, any questions so far? Any questions so far? If not, we should stop here. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ruth Tu. Uh, thank you, Mỹ Hạnh, uh, your teams. Uh, did a great work. Uh, say some consonants uh, to Dao Yuit Lam and special thanks uh, to wonderful MC Cam Nhung. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and you, teacher, yes, for your advice. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. See you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Bye bye for now. <laughs> Not too much over time. Okay. Bye bye.